Fernando Gutierrez has been kind enough to join me while I'm on the road. And he, uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute myself while Fernando is talking so you won't have to deal with this noise throughout. And Fernando, uh, I hear you're a lawyer. Is that true? Yeah, that, that is true. I'm a lawyer and an economist. Okay, so before I uh, get into more about what you do, uh, would you mind telling us how you came to Dash, the Dash Core team, and when? Yeah, in early 2014, I was uh, getting back uh, to research on cryptocurrencies after a brief uh, stint previously. And I discovered um, uh, uh, Darkcoin pretty early on because it, it promoted privacy. And for me, that was really important. Also, I saw um, a real developer behind that, Evan. I, I thought that having a developer who had committed himself two years to the project full time, uh, well, meanwhile, meanwhile, other projects had like anonymous developers who you didn't know if were working or not. That was great. So I was trading different currencies, but soon enough I started um, focusing more on on Dash. Then when Evan announced it, um, his um, plans for masternodes, I realized those were quite quite similar to Tor nodes, and there was a certain foundation in the. US that had done a lot of research uh, around Tor, legal research. So I thought that it would be interesting to talk to them and uh, see what they thought of the plan set up for masternodes. I contacted them. I talked with several of the lawyers. They were super nice. The only thing they asked me was not to use uh, their name because they didn't want that to be perceived as an endorsement. Uh, but they were super nice, uh, and then when I had that research done, I contacted Evan, uh, with whom I had never talked before, and I told him I had been doing that, and he was interested. We started talking, and uh, we worked quite well together, and soon enough, I was doing many things absolutely out of my comfort zone, like keep, um, configuring servers or websites, or um, he was throwing me many crazy ideas he had back then, and, and, and using me and other people around as as, um, uh, as someone to to test things and well that that was it then like in the summer it was like more official i took care of a new website for for the project and after finishing it uh, evan said you should lose yourself in in the side uh, because you're putting a lot of time that was it that was, i think that was yeah summer 2014 or yeah summer, yeah August, September, something like that, I think. So now, whereabouts are you based? I'm in Madrid, in Spain. And now, uh, from a little bit of communication that we had earlier, you you let me know that your sort of that your legal uh, work for the Dash Core team is kind of like a multi-pronged thing, like you do a couple or a few different things. Mind telling us about that? Uh, I've always done many things. Good enough. Uh, never like specializing too much. Um, so I've started many things around the project, but then more qualified people have taken over. Um, right now, I'm doing some legal stuff, uh, which I should be qualified for, but that's the only one part. And then uh, I'm also uh, setting up uh, a support area so we can help uh, any users uh, with any trouble they have around us. Okay, so is that the support desk that I remember seeing a treasury proposal? Yeah, that's it. Um, we are uh, setting up a help desk with uh, people behind that. So uh, users, when they have some trouble, can interact with someone and um, have uh, real help. Because uh, up and, since the beginning, we've been saying that we could not do this because this doesn't scale. And uh, there is a too much. This is a free project. We don't have resources, but right now we we have it. And I've been for me, for a lot of time answering the emails we got through the website, through a form we had there. We explicitly said we didn't provide support, but people wrote anyway because they were having trouble with their money. They they were uh, losing wallets sometimes. They they didn't know how to recover the coins. So every time that someone loses a coin because of a backup he didn't know how to do a lost password or anything it's like a puppy dies on the internet you need to help that you need to prevent them uh, from from losing those coins so it's been a long process of knowing what we can do at what we can't but we'll have a, we're it's already working in 
test phase. Uh, there's a couple of people um, uh, helping. It's uh, Slavik, who you interviewed recently, and also uh, Pablo Lema has recently um, uh, joined, and then Balu is helping project manage everything. So there will be a portal where there's a knowledge base, and then people can uh, start tickets like in any company. And uh, also, obviously, an email and, and that kind of stuff. In the future, maybe we can go farther. Uh, I would like it to go multilingual. There are many things that you can do in that area. And uh, the, the ultimate uh, wish would be that we don't really need that because evolution is so easy to use that no one has any doubt. But in the meantime, we need to help this, these people. <laughs> Well, that's very interesting to hear. Is there a sort of a delivery time estimation that we can hope to see that go? Yeah, uh, we have like several phases uh, planned. Right now we are just answering, we are not publicizing it, but some uh, tickets are coming in, maybe uh, three, four a day. Uh, and all the, all those need a lot of interactions. Sometimes uh, we, we've had like 30 something interactions to help someone uh, do something. Um, so that just a few tickets can 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 get a lot of work, and when we finish uh, policing our processes, then we'll go for the portal. I hope in a few weeks, and maybe then we'll start talking publicly about the URL and the email you need to use if in case you have something. Uh, but first, we need to to police things, and we are training with these people that come, even if we don't invite them. Well, that will be interesting to see when it launches. So now, beyond this help desk that you are helping with, uh, I want to talk a bit more about your legal stuff. Now, as far as what I know about uh, what you're working on, uh, there's two things. And maybe you can tell me about these two things, and maybe more if there is more. But the first thing is that you, you told me that uh, you were attempting to go after the owner of the, the, the scam site dash hyphen wallet dot com at some point uh, how did that go or what's going on there yeah that's that's correct and um, we tried many free things in the past like reporting it to many places but that didn't work out so recently with a big increase in in budget available for for different things we decided in the team that uh, we should put resources into this it's not Practical, probably, because it's really difficult that we really get to, to recover the funds. But at least we need to um, pay for being such a motherfucker. And um, he is uh, being scamming people since the dark coin days. And uh, a lot of people has come to us asking about, about this side. So we've contacted several lawyers. We thought we maybe uh, could be able to grab the domain because he failed to, to renew it, but in the last minute he 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 rescued it. Uh, but we are gonna go um, against him. Uh, by the way, if anyone has suffered losses to this site, uh, please contact me. Uh, the the more the merrier, um, uh, because uh, for any legal action, more people is is always better. Uh, send me an email to fernando at daz.org and, and, and I'll keep you informed and, and we'll see what we can do. We can't guarantee anything, but at least we'll try to first stop the, the damage by taking down the site and second, make him pay for, for what he's doing. And, and then if we can recover coins, that would be amazing. But um, we'll see what we can do. Well, I certainly wouldn't want you coming after me, Fernando. You sound like a lion. Uh, no, I mean, it, we also need to send a message uh, to the, to the to all the. I, I know ninety nine percent of your audience is amazing, but there there are a couple people there that maybe they are thinking about doing something against us users, and well, we need to show that we care, and and and, and this is not an open source a standard open source project that no one is gonna. Uh, do anything. We are a real project with real people behind, with uh, resources, and and as any other company would do, uh, we will try to defend them as much as we can. So now let's switch gears a bit. Um, I also have heard recently that the Dash Core team is attempting to create a sort of like 
customized legal structure for themselves that allows them to separate ownership of, for example, like the dash.org website, and I don't even know what else. Uh, is that something that you are working on? Yeah, that's correct. Um, in in the past, the, the budget we were using was quite limited, and, and acting like individuals was, was completely okay because the, the, risk, uh, the risks were low. Uh, but now that we are talking of a budget of more than half a million uh, per month, and, and much of that is, is managed through the core team projects, uh, we are incurring a lot of risks, legal risks, because we are moving money, we are entering into contracts, we are having a lot of relations and paying for things and hiring people, and that kind of stuff can uh, have legal consequences. Uh, so we think that um, it's not okay to keep acting like a group of friends, so we need a legal entity that uh, helps with that. We had the foundation, I'm a director there, but um, we have discovered that it's probably not the best way to do everything in the same um, in the same entity right now we um, we are looking into probably having some operational uh, entities which will uh, sign the contracts and that, that will that will be how the core team uh, operates but then we'll separate the assets because because of these liabilities uh, those assets could be at risk if uh, they were in the same entity than uh, the, the people working for that. So if we separate those and, 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 and set up uh, in a way that uh, they are protected and controlled by the network somehow, uh, then even if the network wants to uh, fire the core team, it's completely okay because the assets are separated from us. So we are protecting uh, the network from the core team by separating the assets. And also we are protecting the core team members from the outside world by uh, creating an entity that, that holds us uh, together and, and puts a layer between any, anyone and, and, and a core team member signing a contract. So it's, it's those two objectives. So these sorts of these legal structures you're talking about, particularly the one that uh, you'd like to put ownership of network assets into, does that type of thing exist already? Is there like a template you intend to follow, or is this something that you and some people are attempting to write from scratch? No, we will. We are using specialized lawyers and CPAs for these that are consulting with us. We are working with them already. And we will use uh, known figures to avoid the risk of innovating in, into these. There are uh, all kind of trusts um, that you can set up in many places that could work perfectly well for this. Uh, there are the innovations that we are seeing in, uh, like for example, in Delaware, there's a project to incorporate uh, in the blockchain companies, but those are mostly to keep track of a, a service ownership. There are no um, figures that could really do, really tie these to the blockchain at the moment, and we prefer to be really conservative. Those assets could be worth a lot, like the domain or intellectual property, trademarks, that kind of stuff. Uh, we don't want to take risks. We'll, we'll use a, a well-known figure that works well for this, uh, according to lawyers specialized on this uh, specific field. Uh, and, and we'll leave the innovation for the developers and, and, and be conservative in, in, in all other areas. Well, that just leaves uh, me with one final question, uh, which is to ask you, Fernando, uh, in your estimation, say, you know, say the vision of Dash uh, really begins, begins to come to fruition in something like 10 years or 20 years and it's really a globally used network for as a medium of exchange uh, as a lawyer and as someone who has been in this space for you know since dash since the dashboard team first started utilizing your services do you see uh, these traditional legal structures which you're currently you know working to create and things uh, do you see them having long lasting staying power into like a cyber future? Or do you think that there will be uh, almost like a necessity for just legalities in general to to just somehow like adapt to cyberspace or something? <laughs> That's a really um, 
uh, open-ended question. Um, I, I don't know. I, I can't really uh, envision um, what's going to be in 10 to 20 years. Um, my hope is that um, we can uh, make DAS into something that millions of people use, that, uh, that we are able to, to give a tool to those people so they can have real solid, stable money, easy to use, uh, bo completely borderless, and and how things will work around that, I think anyone that claims to know is just faking it. I prefer to say I, I don't have a clue. Yeah, well, I have to say that your answer uh, really matches uh, Evan Duffield's answer when I asked him last week for a sort of like, oh, tell us about 10 years in the future, Evan. He was like, mm, how about we talk three years, maybe? And so I, I can see why Evan likes you. It's, it, it seems like the, the practicality in the now is, um, is, is your primary focus. That, 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 that's one of the great things about, about Evan and the project he, he set up. In a time when uh, other people were launching coins that would do, or projects that would do a million things, uh, Darkcoin was payments, like Bitcoin in the beginning. If, uh, any, anything uh, out of that, we're trying to do something really well and, and, and not uh, deviate in, in other directions. We need to be practical because the obstacles are so many that you need to, to focus on what's important. Well, thank you for your time, Fernando. And for anyone who didn't recall, uh, Fernando did mention that his email address his email address is Fernando at dash.org. And I thank you for your time.